Hello everyone, good morning boys and girls and welcome back to Robbie's English Harmony video blog. Obviously, I'm Robbie, your English fluency mentor and your friend and today I'm bringing you another English idiomatic expression video. And this time around, we're going to look at the following English phrase you can use in your daily conversations. It came to light that. Or the alternative version of the same phrase, it's come to light that. Depending on the context, but you shouldn't be too worried about it. You just take one version, the main one, which is it came to light that. And don't rack your head, don't rack your brain about uh, which version you should be choosing, right? Just go with the one, it came to light that. And uh, if you really want to find out how to use it and uh, how to memorize it and how to become a true master of the English language, just stay with me for a few moments more and you're gonna find it all out. Hello and welcome back my friends. So, the expression it came to light that simply means, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you what it means. I'm just giving you, I'm going to give you an example sentence and you'll be able to see for yourself what it means, right? So, I was talking to one of my new work colleagues yesterday. As a matter of fact, I started a new job recently and uh, for those who've been told by me recently on YouTube that uh, I was going to quit my job and uh, I'm, I was going to focus on English Harmony 24 hours 7. Unfortunately, life has a different plan for me and I had to take up another job simply because of my financial pressures and everything. But that's life, right? And I'm not complaining. It's a good thing, right? It's good to actually have a job these days because so many people are unemployed and I'm not the kind of person who would be just sitting at home collecting social welfare payments and uh, doing nothing, right? I have to be constantly on the go. I have to be out there doing something, meet new people and uh, any change is actually good. So basically when I was talking like, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm getting too fast in my speech and you see my friends, you, you can't speak too fast because you run the risk of stuttering, stumbling upon words, so you always have to manage your fluency, keep your speech steady, right? And I still I still go by the same principles every day of the week and I still manage my own fluency because even though I've been a fluent speaker for a good few years now, I still have my moments, right? And anyway, I was talking to my work colleague and it came to light that there's been a couple of people before me on the same team who've been there for a long, long time, nine years to be more specific, right? And then they, they were just transferred onto the day shift. You see, I'm going to be working nights now. And uh, yeah, it came to light that two guys were working there for nine years, which is a very, very long time if you consider Night shift begins at around 8 o'clock and ends at 3 o'clock in the morning, right? But it's not too bad, to be honest with you. I've had night jobs, uh, night job, singular, right? When I had to finish at 8 o'clock and then sit in the car and uh, have an hour, an hour and a half's drive home, which was very dangerous. I'm sorry, I just need my morning coffee those because I came home at three o'clock last night, right? Half three to be more specific. But anyway, that was the first example. It came to light that something had happened, right? So what it means? As you can see, it clearly means that it just transpired. I just found out that something happened. So that's what this expression is all about. It, it came to light that something happened simply means I found out that something happened or had happened, right? But don't get too bogged down on these English tenses. Just uh, speak simply. There's nothing wrong with simplified English. Don't use perfect tenses if you're not ready for it. And 
you may want to check out this article and there's a video as well where I'm talking about using simpler uh, grammar tenses first and then moving on to the more difficult ones if you're not ready for for the more complicated kind of English grammar yet right and uh, speaking of my new job right when I started looking for it I didn't even know that I was gonna be working during nights I, I went to the recruitment agency as you do when you seek for a new job right signed up and then I was under the impression that I would be doing a normal day job right it's not to say that my job is not normal but I'm saying that uh, more often than not on nine occasions out of ten people will be offered daytime positions right and then a couple of weeks later it came to light that the new position that uh, I had been told about was a night job but I, I was not gonna refuse I was not gonna tell them listen I can't do night jobs and uh, I'm not gonna be very choosy and give me a day job no night jobs have actually their perks a perk is an advantage right one of them being a slightly higher pay right people are paid a little bit extra to do the night job which is a great thing right we always need money and finishing at three o'clock in the morning is not so bad after all right it's as if you you had gone to a party and came home late right so it's it's no bother meaning it's no problem right and uh, for instance this morning i got up before nine o'clock right it's, it's pretty normal right i went to bed at four got up before nine i got four and a half or sleep or thereabouts which is not very great but then I'm then again I'm gonna grab a few more hours in late afternoon to get my body prepared for the for the next shift which begins tonight so there's that right and uh, let me think of another example but before that I need my caffeine boost I'm sorry guys I don't mean to be rude but that's what I need right and on top of that my mouth is getting dry right so it came to light let me give you an example of using it's come to light it's pretty much the same thing the only difference being when you're using it came to light it's used in context of uh, a series of events you're telling you're you're telling a story about past events what happened and then you tell them one thing I, I went there, I did that, and then I spoke to someone, and then it came to light that and that's when you use the simple past. It came to light. I went to work, I spoke to my new work colleague, and then it came to light that two guys before me had been there for nine years, which is a long time, and uh, I was very impressed about that, right? But it's come to light that. That's how you would begin a sentence. It's come to light that our, and I'm, uh, whatever I'm gonna say now, is gonna be totally fictional, right? I'm gonna make it up on the go. I, I'm gonna improvise. It's come to light, or recently it's come to light, that our new prime minister had been involved in, uh, in, in a corruption scandal five years ago. So he had to resign pretty much immediately after spending just a few days in the office, right? So basically, there's no events that would have preceded, meaning precede means happened before your statement in relation to as as to what had come to light, right? You, you, you're not saying, <clears throat> I went there, I spoke to that person, and then it came to light that, but you just begin your sentence with, it's come to light that basically you can start that sentence uh, that way when you speak to someone. It's, it sounds a little bit formal, uh, conversationally, when speaking to a friend, you'd rather tell them, listen, I found out that our new prime minister and so on and so forth, right? But recently it's come to light, that's probably what you'd hear on a newscast, right? On news, on TV. Recently it's come to light that 
blah, 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 right? Our prime minister had been uh, involved in a drug scandal 15 years ago. <laughs> this is obviously totally fictional. But then who knows? Maybe there there are some uh, high high se sitting, well, how do you say, high, se high seated people or high sitting people. You see, my English is not perfect either. There are some things that I struggle with at times. And what I would do now is, uh, after recording this video, I would actually go online and look it up and see what way you actually say it. High seated persons, high seated, high sitting. I can just do it right now. And this is how you verify the uh, validity of new English expressions and collocations, right? You, you speak and then you say something that you're not really sure of. And then you look it up in quotation marks. Remember, that's the rule of thumb when looking up something on Google, right? Highly sitting. No, nothing comes up. Highly seated people. Let me see. No, only 10 results, which means it's a totally in invalid, right? Maybe it was high seated people or something. 183 results, but it's still not good enough. People in high places. That's the expression I was actually thinking of, right? Maybe there is one in involving these exact words, high seated people or something like that, but uh, people in high places. People in high places. Places, there you go, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, 2,238,000 results, right? So that's the expression I was kind of thinking of, right? My brain was uh, on the right path, it kind of knew what my mouth had to say, but uh, for some reason or another, and it just happens, I just couldn't say it, right? But then people in high places, right? And then uh, I have to repeat it a good few times, people in high places, people in high places, Surely they, there have been people in high places who've been involved in drugs-related scandals, right? And after that, they had to resign. Surely there are incidents like that happening all over the wor world every now and then, right? So, uh, yeah, that's that, my friends. I hope now you have a clear picture of how this particular English expression, it came to light, has to be used, right? And also the alternative version, it's come to light that basically the difference is the first one is used in a story where events follow each other. You go somewhere, you talk to someone, and then it, it, it comes to light that something had happened, right? But when you begin a sentence, you just say it's come to light that or recently or uh, last month. No, actually last month it came to light, right? That's English grammar. When you specify a specific time, then you actually use simple past, right? But when you just begin a sentence, you just say, it's come to light that, and then followed by whatever you want to say, right? Okay, I'm not going to be too lengthy this time around. I'm going to finish my video right, right now. And uh, obviously, if you have any comments or questions, please, Feel free to publish them in the comments section below, my friends, and talk to you soon again. Bye-bye.